Welcome back to Adventure World in Godot. So in this video we're going to look at making the uh, torch for the player to go into the cave. So I played around with this quite a bit and in order to uh, practice on this what I ended up doing is making a um, spike scene. And so a spike is in programming is kind of like when you when you want to prove a concept you kind of make this uh, little prototype and uh, it allows you to build something uh, that may or may not be used in the final product uh, and it takes a lot of pressure off. So <clears throat> in this case what I did is I created a scene, empty scene, I added a bunch of objects and I added both polygons and uh, I'll talk about polygons in a minute but I added both polygons and sprites and uh, I found that lights behave differently on these two and that's why I wanted to add both so I could kinda see what was going on there. Um, and lights in Godot in 2D, let's go ahead and look at this. If you type in light up here in the search bar, you get two different types of light nodes. There's a light and a light occluder. And so what the light occluder for is creating shadows in 2D. And uh, we may look at that briefly. I wasn't able to figure out how to get that to look really nice in the situation that I wanted. So I probably won't look, use those in this project, uh, but, but we may look at those really briefly so you can see how, what they do. Um, but then the lights have different modes, and so if you create a node, uh, excuse me, a light node here, and you look at the settings down here in the inspector, uh, one of them is this mode, and there's four different modes. I wasn't able to figure out how subtract works. Let's look at that real quick. And uh, it basically just turns everything gray, and uh, so I'm obviously missing something, and this is the texture, so I would expect to see that texture represented in some way, but I don't. So anyways, uh, I did mess with the additive and what that does is it adds uh, this lights value so if it's black it doesn't add anything but if it's white it adds that white value to the um, the, the scene the nodes behind it so that was, that's really useful this is probably good for in a lit scene having uh, a light uh, like a torch or something make it look a little br brighter um, but in our case we want to go down into a deep dark cave and as you notice this is not affecting that either the polygon or the sprite in any way so um, and that's because they're black uh, so then another type of light is a mixed light and I wasn't able to figure out much the difference of how a mixed light and a mask light works they behave very similarly I think the mixed maybe combines some of the values of the additive with the, the mask, but um, this was a neat effect that I was able to create, and I did this by creating, uh, using one of these, uh, it was actually in the FX, in the art, in the FX uh, folder from Kenny's Assets, there was this image, and uh, it creates this neat kind of effect, and so I, I first made it like this, and I put the player here in the center, and this was kind of like the torch light. Uh, and it works pretty good and I, I filled up the whole screen with it like this and it looks pretty good the only downside was is that uh, when you were outside the cave I just turned the visibility of this off and then as soon as you came in the cave I turned it on but the problem was is that transition was uh, kinda stark because you went from you know bright light to all of a sudden the whole screen was black except for around the player and that was doable uh, I think I think it would have been fine but I wanted to see if Godot had a, a better solution. So what I found was using the mask light, which behaved very similarly, but I changed the texture quite a bit. So I made this texture, which is a solid white texture, and here I'll show you how I made it. It's a solid white texture, and then I erased a little hole in the middle using the erase function, and this is in Krita, using the erase function and a uh, airbrush uh, brush. And so I was able to erase a little hole in the center, and then that gave me this this node or image. And this is the effect I get. So let me unlock it. So I locked it down so I wouldn't click it on accident. So here's pretend this is my cave darkness, and as the player comes in, it lights it up. And you notice the background is not affected, and the reason for that is I'm using uh, masks or layer masks. So <clears throat> I specifically moved this uh, light onto ma layer 2 and I also moved this darkness into layer 2 and everything else is on the default layer 1. 
So let's look at how this is going to affect how this is going to come into play in our game. So uh, oh, before I do that, let me look at uh, shadows real quick. So I have shadows disabled on this node. So if I turn them on, you can see there the effect that I was talking about how that creates a shadow on that block. <clears throat> now the thing I found that was not desirable about this is that uh, I can't see the block because it counts this edge as a shadow and so that's where it starts casting the shadow from uh, and I don't think that's incorrect but uh, it looks a little little funny so or undesirable for me because I'd kinda like to see the, you know that I'm walking on dirt or whatever if I adjust the color on that and like pull down the alpha, you're like, oh, now I can see the, th the object, and I don't even mind that the shadow is gray. The problem is, is now it doesn't respect the edge of our um, layer mask. So this shadow isn't part of the mask of this uh, light. And so uh, I think this would look really, really odd if, if this was in a full a full scene so if, and even there you know if I'm walking up and I can see part of my dungeon and I, I don't really want that um, I looked at also maybe turning this one off and then combining that with another light like this additive light over here so let me lock this uh, and then come over here and add this additive light and then let's turn on shadows I guess they are turned on so you can see it really slight effect there uh, and that might be okay. We could potentially do something like that. So if we put this on top of this other one, we could get this more subtle effect. And the weird thing here is that this color doesn't seem to affect uh, additive lights. So shadows behave differently based on the type, the mode of the light. Uh, so that was kind of cryptic. Anyways, I'm not going to worry about uh, the shadows too much. I don't. We may play with it just to see if it works, uh, but. I probably will not use those. So let's jump into our level and make this work. So I've already moved my player up and we in the last video we made some adjustments so he can get around a little bit better. We'll probably have to adjust this cave uh, down the road but for now let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to move him over just a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to turn this cave black. So um, I'm going to create a node called just a regular node 2D. And I'm going to call this my cave darkness. And then inside of that I'm going to add a polygon. Now remember I, s I mentioned that I tested both polygons and uh, sprites and the reason for the polygons was this. I want to be able to make darkness and I want it to be Right, I want it to cover all of our cave area. So I don't want the player, when he's underground, to be able to see light. Let me zoom out some more so I can get this done quicker. And if I had tried to do this with a um, uh, with a sprite, it would have taken me significantly longer than this. So this makes it real easy for me. I have to be careful there because I'd really prefer not to see that. Now of course that's white so let's make it black and there we go. Now this unfortunately what would happen is if I, my player came in here he'd still be able to see the walls. And that's because of the ordering of this. My foreground map is above my foreground static object. So I'm going to move this down below there and then you notice this all goes black. Now this is not desirable for uh, and I probably didn't need this node. Let's see if I can delete that little node right there. Yeah. So it's probably not desirable for um, viewing so I could disable that if I wanted to. But let's just see what happens when I get the player in here. So right now the player is going to walk into complete darkness as he walks in and that's what I want. So I don't want the player, I want him to be confused, like he could make it through here if he really tried, but he's going to be confused and not knowing where he's going. So let's fix that by uh, adding the light to him. 
So I'm going to go into the player scene and I'm going to add a new node that's a light 2D. And to that I'm going to call it the torchlight. Rename it, call it torch. And it needs a texture. So I'm going to drag this one in. That was that one I talked about that I made. And the other thing I need to do is make sure I put it on the right mask. So you do that here under range. That's where you change the, the mask for the, the torch light. And I think I'm going to have to increase the texture scale, but let's go ahead and see what happens first. Alright, so nothing's happening. And I believe the reason why is I forgot to set the mode to mask. Let's try that. Still nothing happening. What did I do? Oh, I think I remember. I set the mask on my light, but I didn't set it on my polygon. Let's click on the polygon and go down to visibility. And here's the light mask. So I need to make sure that's on light mask too. Let's see if that works. A little skeptical that I have something else going on. Oh, it's working. Very good. So now I need to scale it up because obviously my light is a little bit too small. Uh, and I could fix this by increasing my texture size, but I think I also, I didn't test it here, but I think also my um, I guess it doesn't matter in this case. I'd probably be better off doing is making a light that or an image that was just the size of my player. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that real quick. So instead of this, <clears throat> I probably need more of a square image. So let's do new, and we'll do, uh, say, 300 by 300. And we'll go with white. We'll do the same thing as I did before. We'll do the uh, airbrush with the uh, erase. And for my size, I'm actually going to go bigger. I want this to be almost the size of my yeah, screen right here. So I'm going to just erase away a little bit. There we go. So let me save this. And I'm going to save it uh, as a PNG file. And I'm going to save it right on top of this one. Let's go back into Godot. And so that should be assigned to my player's light right there. Let's see how this looks. So I'm hoping it's bigger <clears throat> and it's more centered. So that's actually a lot more like what I wanted. But this light is a little bit too small and I may have made it a little bit too sharp. But uh, we can deal with that. So let's make it, let's do this texture scale and we'll do. Two, which should double it in size. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. So we've got, with that little bit of work, we've got a really nice looking, now I've got a angle up there that I'd like to get rid of. So let's see if I can do that. But we've got a really good looking effect uh, that really didn't take us that long to build out. So what I'm gonna do is extend this over like this and I may have to bring my water up a little bit. Let's, let's do that. And I may have to bring the water up in this corner there by adding dirt and go in. That gives that little corner a little bit of more mystique and kind of leads the player into it a little bit. If we add a little bit more, there we go. So it kind of ramps the player in. Hopefully that'll that'll look good on the that side as well. So got a nice little angle effect going on there, which doesn't look too bad. Can't see that corner up there. Looks great. All right, so there's our uh, torch, but <clears throat> torches tend to flicker a little bit. So let's see if we can add a flicker effect to it. That should be pretty easy. Uh, I could use this animation player. But he's busy doing some other things, and I'm not sure if you can blend them. I don't think you can. So what I'm going to do is create a new animation player. 
and call it my torch animation player and I probably could combine these into a single node which would probably be smart or perhaps child this to that guy let's try that and see what happens honestly I'm not not entirely sure uh, I bet this is designed to work alongside it so let's try, let's do this let's make a new node called node 2d and we will call this our torch and we will put both of these guys into that there we go this feels better all right so on this we're gonna make a the animation and come down here to the animation player we're gonna create a new animation we're gonna call this setup and so this we want to record the initial value of the light <clears throat> so what we're gonna do to kind of make the light flicker is we're gonna adjust this texture scale so what I'm hoping that'll do is it'll create the the effect that the light is getting brighter and softer by <clears throat> uh, modifying the size of that so we'll give it a shot and see what happens so what I want to do is record the initial size and I do that by creating a keyframe right there and I'm good to go and the other thing I need to do is set that to auto start alright so this will be the size of my texture to begin with alright so now I want to create the flicker so let's create a new animation we'll call it flicker right there and actually let's see is there a rename there we go I'm gonna go with lowercase because I'll probably forget that's uppercase later so I want to flicker this so let's go with like a say two second animation I'm gonna record uh, the texture scale right here and then we're gonna to go to about what I noticed was is that lights tend to flicker brightly for a very brief period of time so what I want to do is create like two actually let's make this three seconds long so my my idea here is to make it feel a little bit random by building in um, <clears throat> an animation that's long enough that we can create little spikes of uh, brightness that will be inconsistent in uh, in timing so that the player doesn't feel like he's getting um, he's watching a, a, a sequence so let's make a little brief section here so I'm going to uh, record that texture scale right there and I'm going to go forward one little step right and I'm going to bump this up to 2.2 uh, two. let's try that I'm record that I'm going to go one more step forward and I'm going to go back to 2.0 oops two. and record that so that's my brief little spike right there I'm going to do it again. Uh, I'm going to wait, you know, a few seconds, and I'm going to do another little s spike. So we may have to adjust these. Oops. Yeah, I can do that here. I'm going to go back here and do two and record it. And then I'm going to go over here and two, record it. And we'll do one more like here, here. back down, record it, and we go to our end and record it. So let's see what this looks like when we play this. Now I can set this as my default and I can set it to auto repeat. So I know I'm, I erased this setup but this would help me get back if I needed to. I think that's just a good practice from what I've been able to tell. <clears throat> Alright so let's play this and see what happens when I go into my cave. alright so that's not too bad uh, I've got a linear interpolation on there so that's why that's kind of uh, getting bigger and smaller I don't think I can change let's see if we can change the time scale so the steps right now are 0.1 let's see if I can go down to 0.01 oh I can 
So what we can do here is zoom this in, and let's pull this number closer to there, pull that one closer to there, and let's do the same thing down here. These don't have to be perfect, but the idea is, is I wanted those flickers to be a little bit faster. Now, the thing, two things I'm noticing. One, the flicker maybe is a little bit too harsh, and the second thing is, is it's uh, too long of a period between it, and maybe we could dip down a little bit too. Uh, so let's look at that. So if I go to my animation <clears throat> uh, right here. <clears throat> let's change our value from to point two to two point one. Not sure why that's not restoring my value when I click on it. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not super familiar with the animation stuff. So So that restored it. Let's go back to my flicker and we'll play that. Okay. So that's working. So let's. Oh, I need to scrub. That's why. I can't just click the node. I have to scrub there. So here we go. 2.0. Oops. Yep, my bad. So I need to scrub this blue line to where I want to adjust and that's where I adjust this. So 2.1 and record and then we'll scroll forward and scrub to right there. We'll go to 2.1 record scrub forward 2.1 record and there's the end. Okay so that should fix my harshness. Uh, now we kind of want to fix how long there is between these. So let's move this one f down here. So I'm just going to kind of... Didn't know I had that one. I'm just going to kind of uh, compress these a little bit. So grab these guys, come down here. And then same with these. I'll pull these down. And I'm going to reduce my overall animation time to just a few seconds. We'll see. We'll see if it feels too repetitive. So this is probably fine right here. And then, uh, so this is at 1.5. Let's change this to 1.5 seconds. Maybe too short, but we'll see. Oh, and I forgot my last one here. Let's grab him, pull him back. It's right there at the 1.5 marker. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Might be too flashy. I don't want to give anybody a seizure, but that's not too bad. Uh, we could dip down a little bit. So, back to my animation. Here on my animation scale, let's make a little dip down um, right here in this long period. So I'm going to scrub to right there-ish, <clears throat> and then I'm going to come over here to my torch light and make it 1.9 instead. So I'm going to dip down. Actually, I wanted to record it first at two. And I'm going to scrub over just a hair and go down to 1.9. Record and then go forward a little bit and then go back up to two. And record. All right. So let's see if we can tell that's in there. Oh yeah, that's good. A little bit of a flicker going on. 
<clears throat> and one last effect I want to add. So we're going to leave our animation like that. One last effect I wanted to add is let's add another light. We'll just try this out and see how it looks. And so on this one, I'm going to add my uh, torch effects. And for this image, I'm going to use uh, one of my smokes here. So I've got kind of these harsher smokes. This one might work good. Um, and I want this to be additive, but maybe my energy, I'm going to pull it down. And so that's how effective that light is. So I'm not going to be able to see that well here in my player, um, but I should be able to see it here. So let's drag the player in here. And hopefully I can see that effect here. So I'm going to boost this back up. Let's go to like 0.7 maybe. I uh, don't see it. Let's go ahead and play it and see if I see it now. Yeah, so there we go. So I see that effect here. Let's scale it up so that it fills the whole, the whole lighting area. And we may need to animate it a little bit so that it doesn't feel so static. So let's try two times the size. So yeah, that adds a nice little uh, texture to that light. It's maybe a little bit too harsh because my player is getting a little washed out. So let's uh, bump that back down to like 0.5. And then the other thing I wanted to do is let's add a little bit of a yellow tint to it. It's kind of like right there. Let's see how that looks. I'm keeping it nice and saturated because it's going to get washed out anyways by the, uh, or colorized by the, the colors around it. I think that looks pretty good though. So we've got a nice little uh, a texture effect to our light. And uh, the only downside is when I come outside of my uh, area here I really don't want to see it so I may have to turn it on and off based on whether or not you're inside of here so I may turn it on like right here maybe I don't know unfortunately I don't think I can include it as part of the uh, well I could what we could do is modify this texture, this color back in here um, that we're masking with by that lighting texture. That's interesting. So let's try that. So I'm going to disable that effect for now. Let's go back to this image and see if we can do that. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is use layers in uh, Krita to do this. So let me see. This is my actual image that I've already got. going on right so that's layer one is uh, the white part so this layer two is completely empty okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this fire one image and layer it on top in here so to do that what I'm gonna do is open uh, let's see open what was it fire underscore one Fire underscore one, let's open that into Krita. So I'm going to insert as new layer. And uh, so I didn't need to create this layer, it's going to go ahead and create one for me. So let's remove that one. And then I need to move it. So I'm going to use the uh, tool right here, I believe. Let's move stuff. Uh, no. Let's see. Let's try pulling that in again. And hmm. I think my the issue I'm having is the size is too big for this image and it's clipping it off. And I really wanted to readjust it to fit. I'm not super familiar with Krita. It's showing the full image there on the layer. I wonder, can I move just that? Oh, here's the move tool. That's what I wanted. All right, so then I want to scale it too. So let's use the scale tool. And there's my whole image. So I'm holding down shift so that my image stays uh, 
stays the same form and I want to make it just slightly bigger than there so I keep the texture alright so that's perfect so now I've got this now <coughs> with um, let's move this one so the neat thing about oh I'm sorry I need to remove this one again so the neat thing about using layers in photo editing is that you can combine them so I could change the opacity uh, and get an effect like that and bring this one on top which is probably what I want so now I've got the background effect while I'm keeping this so let's try that I think this is mm, I think what I'm going to want is to actually increase the opacity on this a little bit more. Let's try that. Let's go back to Godot. I probably should have saved that image before I added that, but it's not too hard to change. So let's go ahead and play this. Uh, so I don't see my effect there, even though it should be on my image there. So maybe we didn't, maybe I need to adjust this opacity a little bit. So let's save that and give that another shot. So I definitely see it affecting there. I see it there. I can tell my light's a little bit darker, but I don't really see the effect like I'd hoped I would. The kind of texturing. Um, and you notice here I can see my transition line and that's because this image is not fully uh, erased there. So yeah, I'm not super thrilled with this. I'd rather go back to what we had here um, before I created this second layer so let's go ahead and remove that and just save this guy. And if we need to, we can always <clears throat> add it back in with the second light. I think that effect was better. So yeah, there, I, I don't see the transition line. and <clears throat> I think that looks better. That was a good uh, good experiment to see how that would, would behave. Uh, but I, yeah, I think the second torch light looked looked better. So let's uh, make a quick trigger to turn that on when I get into the cave uh, and then turn it back off when when I leave the cave so that I don't run around with this uh, kind of weird lighting effect on everywhere. And I think that's okay because it's kind of, kind of like uh, maybe him turning his torch on and off. So let's try that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is go back to my level and right here I'm going to create two areas and one will be like a light on and the other one will be a light off. So that'll also reduce my overhead because I can turn the entire lighting effect on and off which will eliminate the need for that light to try and render when he's not within this uh, cave. So let's go ahead and get started on that. <clears throat> so it can be a background object and there's my water cave, but I don't have one for the cave yet. And I'm planning on adding some objects in there, so I'm going to need a new node 2D in my background objects for that. So I'm going to call that my cave. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that so I don't move it on accident. And then I'm going to add, um, add these areas. So let's go ahead and make those as separate game objects. Uh, where is my top corner? Here we go. So here's my origin right here. I'm going to create a new, and this will be an area 2D. And I'm going to call this my light toggle. I'm going to add a script to that. And uh, I'm just going to make it, yeah, that's fine. I need to save this first. So to that, I'm going to add a uh, collision shape. And to that, I'm going to assign it a rectangle. And we'll just make it kind of tall and a little bit fatter. And then I'm going to save this, and I'm going to save it under Objects. I'm going to call it Light Toggle. And there we go. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. 
I'm going to add a script. And now because I've got it saved, it's going to save my script in the same folder. <clears throat> and I need two. I'm going to need an export, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So export and bool. And this is going to be whether it toggles the light on or off. So toggle on equals true. So I'm going to make it to turn turn the light on by default. All right. And then uh, I need to add some triggers here. So I'm going to go onto my area and I'm going to do body entered. All right. And to this, I'm going to say, actually, you know, it would work really well. And this would be a lot simpler. So, okay, this that's great. So let's delete this. All this work. Don't need this. Don't care. What we're going to do is we're going to add the script to that uh, polygon that we already created. That would be fantastic. So let's go ahead and go back to my objects and clean up that those files I just made. So I don't need this. Whoops. Don't want to use the delete key. I need to delete those here. So I'll delete that. And then I also don't need this. Okay. <clears throat> so I remove those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into my level and on this guy I'm going to add a script. So this is my um, let's call this darkness polygon and let's go ahead and add a script to that. So add a script <clears throat> and it wants to add it here into levels which is probably not what I want. So let's just make it a built-in script. I think that'll be okay for this this situation. I hit create and <clears throat> that's not what I wanted. So what I need is I need an area to collide with when this happens. So I need a new area 2D right here that this darkness will be part of. So I can tip don't need to specify that I guess. This needs to be my darkness area, okay? And this is where the script will be. So I can remove that script and I can add it here. And I'll go ahead and leave that as a built in. Okay, that's better. All right, so the reason I did this is because uh, areas have two triggers that I noticed. I remembered this, but I just noticed it, and that's what triggered this thought. So I can use the body entered uh, to turn the light on, and the body exited to turn it off. So let's go ahead and attach both of these. Uh, and it wants to add the script up here, but I really want to focus that. So let's add it here to my darkness area. And let's add the exited to the darkness area as well. Okay. <clears throat> so here's my two functions. They should trigger when the player comes in. So we need to check that it's the player. So I can say if body dot is in group, and I've got the player. All right. And so what I'm going to do is say uh, body dot turn on light. Uh, right, let's call it toggle light. Toggle light true to turn, toggle it on. And the same thing here, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go false here to toggle the light off. So now we just need to add to our player, we need to add a, apologize my kids just came in, <laughs> I'm going to add another function called toggle, toggle light and it takes a turn on. Alright, so that's whether or not I'm going to turn it on, and there's my toggle. All right, so to do that, all we need to do is we're inside of our player, so I need to get this torch, and I'm just going to disable this entire block, right, this entire node. So from here down, I'm just going to basically do that. All right, so to do that, what I can do is say uh, torch.hide and torch.show based on this turn on. So if turn on, then torch.show, and then else, since that's a boolean, I know the else is going to hide. All right, and to 
uh, get this prepared, I'm going to turn it off by default, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to call that method called toggle light, uh, and I'm going to say false. So this assumes that our player doesn't start inside of the uh, darkness. Okay, so let's see if this works, like I'd hoped. And so my player's outside of the light, or outside of the darkness, and as he enters, absolutely nothing happens. <laughs> All right, so let's let's go back and see what's going on. So here I'm going to say a print statement and say body dot name, and let's see if that triggers when I come into the light and leave it. So. Yeah, I'm not triggering. And the reason why is this. I just realized when I created this uh, area 2D, notice it's got an error. The error is basically saying, hey, you need a collision shape. And because I did a polygon, I had in my head that this was a collision shape, but it's not. This is a graphical polygon. And what I need is a uh, collision polygon. Well, Godot has this really fancy, uh, I don't know if it's an intended feature, but what you can do is duplicate this and then change the type to a collision polygon and it preserves the the um, the path see how it created a, a nice collision polygon for me using the path that was already there for the visual polygon uh, and I can hide that if I want we can leave that on so now I need to move my player outside of that let's move the player I uh, didn't mean to do that. So let's lock these before I go and get myself into trouble. Lock. All right, so um, I want to move my player. Let's move him outside of the darkness. There we go. All right, so player doesn't have the light effect. As soon as I enter, I get the nice lighting effect, and it starts up. I've got a little bit of a harsh and it cuts out when I leave and I've still got my little <laughs> logging system there so I've got a little bit of an effect right here but I can live with that uh, I could I can say that's the player turning on the light when he comes into the darkness this video is getting long enough so I think we'll cut it there thanks for watching I hope you learned something and I hope uh, hope you're enjoying the series um, next we'll probably work on populating out some more details and then uh, I think the pick is coming up next. So you'll dive down into this cave, you'll pick up the pick, and that'll allow you to uh, get deeper in the cave and get the next upgrade. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.